It's been a while since I've been on YouTube, and I've been meaning to speak on this topic for a while, but just really didn't have the time to do it. And I apologize to those that uh, look forward to these videos and those that are edified by these videos and I had not been able to produce them lately. But I want to speak on being in bed with the devil. In bed with the devil. This thought came from Two scenarios that took place. One was by a woman that dated an ex-Satanist. She dated an ex-Satanist. And now she appears to be extremely scorned. Her feelings are hurt. And that reminds me of women that are attracted to thugs in the natural sense. The bad boy, the gangster, the drug dealer, the gang banger. She does not mind him breaking the law. She does not mind him going back and forth to prison. She's attracted to that wild side. And the same applies for many women in churches that are attracted to the power of a preacher. Especially a preacher that's getting a lot of attention. Especially a preacher that claims to have the powers of darkness. Powers of of the devil. And now this person claims to transform into an angel of light. And without any type of spiritual discernment, she falls for the okie doke. And she end up in bed with this alleged minister this alleged preacher that claims to be an ex-Satanist. So she's attracted to that spiritual gangster, that spiritual thug that's got a wild side to him. He claims to be a minister of Christ, but he's an ex-Satanist. So he gets the attention of a lot of Christians, a lot of thirsty women that seeks that dark side, that wild side, because the light is too boring. And then this message tackles a bishop that goes by the name of C. Montez Jones that consulted a medium to consult the dead in his behalf and according to him he got results. But then the thought comes to my mind that you are a bishop a man of the cloth someone that claims to be anointed by God, that God called you, that God unctioned you to lead the sheep, to feed the sheep of Christ. You're supposed to be powerful, even more powerful than the mediums, the witches and warlocks. But you lost a loved one and you consulted a medium because apparently God was not powerful enough to answer your questions. And you being a bishop, 
you would think that you have that power. That you operate in the five-fold ministry gifts. Now, this alleged bishop claimed to have apologized. This preacher apologized. But it's different when a preacher does it than when a normal, everyday parishioner behind the pews do it. It's entirely different. Because the bishop or the preacher or the pastor supposedly receive instructions from God. He's the man that the people go to if they have problems, if they have questions, if they need healing. And he's supposed to be able to operate in the fivefold ministry gifts to discern their problems. But yet, he violates God's word. See, God is a jealous God. And the Bible says that thou shalt have no other God before me. So you violated God. And trust and believe that regardless of how much you claim to be sorry or repent. And you can't really repent if you're in bed with the devil. And I spoke on that in the past and there's people that have a problem with that because they claim that, you know, a preacher, um, God forgives them and we must forgive. And that's true to an extent, but a preacher is an entirely different breed. I'm going to read a scripture to you. And then I'm going to speak on that for a moment. The first scripture I want to touch on is 1 Chronicles, the 10th chapter, reading the 13th verse. So Saul died for his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord. Now, what did Saul do that would cause him to lose his life? And did Saul end up in hell for the transgression which he committed against the Lord? Keep in mind, this does not talk about repentance. It does not talk about him being sorry or even being delivered from what he did. But it said, so Saul died for his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord. Even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. Now, Saul went to a medium. And according to 1 Chronicles, Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against God. So, C. Montez Jones will pay for what he did. Now, he made a video and was telling people to leave him alone. And he was talking about church folks and the hate messages that he was receiving and how people are unapologetic. I sent him a message and wanted to interview him because I wanted to get into his mind to find out what would make him become so desperate that he consult a medium, the enemy of God, to inquire. It's like, Aren't you supposed to be able to have those powers or those authorities? But yet 
Even though there's people in the church that may operate in the fivefold ministry gifts, there's certain things that you are not supposed to know. There's things that's not for you to know. Because if God wanted you to know them, he would reveal them to you. I shared a story before about when my father had passed. Now, my father really wasn't a good person. His life wasn't a good person. How he treated my moms growing up, he wasn't a good person. But yet his friends in the street thought he was a great guy because, and even the ones that knew what he was doing, thought he was a great guy because they were friends. So friends are going to look out for friends, regardless of how wicked that friend may do, right? Right? But when my father passed away, I went to sleep one night and I had this, this, this vision. And in this vision, the phone rang. I was supposed to go out and get a pizza. And one of my family members was in the kitchen. And the phone rang. It was a landline phone. And she answered the phone and she told me, she said, um... It's for you. It's your father. So when I got on the phone, I said, hello. I didn't hear anything. All I heard was static on the line, just staticky. And I said, hello. And it was nothing but static. And when I hung the phone up, I said, there's nobody on the phone. And she said it was your father. He said he wanted to tell you something. Now, to date, I have no idea what it was that he was supposed to or wanted to tell me. It wasn't revealed to me. It wasn't for me to know. If it was for me to know, God would have manifested that to me. And see, when you are a child of God, when you have the gifts that God instill upon you, trust upon you, God will make known the things that you need to know. Another situation I shared before was my son's mother. Her mother and father had passed. And one night I fell asleep on the sofa and I was, I was laying asleep and when I woke up, she was sitting on the other chair and when I woke up she was just looking at me and I'm looking like why are you looking at me asleep right but she was looking at me and in this dream when I had this vision before I woke up I had this vision that I was in this house it was my house but it wasn't the house that I'm living in and the door flew open it just the wind just knocked the door open and the big gush of wind came through and I closed the door back but yet I felt the presence in the house. And when I closed the door, I heard a voice. I heard her mother's voice say, I'm okay. I'm okay. So fast forward, when I woke up, she was looking at me. She was sitting on the other couch, on the other uh, chair, and she was looking at me. And I lifted my head up and I said, I looked at her and I said, it's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And she just looked with this wild look on her face and I said, do you know who that is? And she said, it's my mother. And that was it. I guess that was a message for her. So if God wants you to know something, he will reveal it to you. In the church is full of, of people that have spiritual gifts, that were born with spiritual gifts. Him being a bishop, he should have been aware of those people in his congregation that have spiritual gifts. Unless, of course, he does not have the anointing, he's not gifted, so he's not going to recognize those that are gifted with the spirit of discernment, with the spirit of healing. 
with the gift of prophecy. Those that dream and have visions. You know, these are spiritual gifts that's within the church. So if he's a bishop over a church, he's a pastor. And you mean to tell me there's no one in his congregation that's saved and that's operating in the spiritual gifts of God? What about the ministers that's under him? How many of those ministers in that church are gifted? that have the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit to the point where he had no confidence in the Holy Spirit of Yah where he had to go to a witch. He had to go to a medium to ask questions. The next scripture I want to read is taken from the book of Deuteronomy. The 18th chapter, reading the 10th and to the 12th verse. And it reads as follows. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Or that use divination. Or an observer of times. Or an enchanter or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, a medium, or a wizard, or a necromancer, someone that contacts the dead. The 12th verse says, For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doeth drive them out from before thee. That's the word of the Lord. That's the Bible that the pastors and the bishops have to follow. But instead, apparently God didn't have the power to give him answers, he had to consult a medium that gave him the answers that he was looking for. The next scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, reading the 15th to the 17th verse. And it reads as follows Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. The 16th verse says what? Know ye not that ye, that he, which is joined with a harlot, is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So C. Montel Jones or C. Montez Jones is joined to a harlot and is one body with that harlot. He become married to that harlot, to the spirit of that medium. He is married to the devil because if he was joined unto the Lord, he would be one with the Lord. There will be no need for him to commit spiritual adultery by going to a medium to consult about the dead. So I don't care how much he repent or how much he say he's sorry, his spirit ain't right. And of course, he's going to always have people that continue to follow him just because they think he's a good man. The Bible says that none is good. No, not, not one. So he was wrong. But God will judge him. God is his judge. The final scripture is taken from Leviticus, 
the 20th chapter, reading the 27th verse. And it reads as follows. A man also or a woman that has a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. Now keep in mind, this is not talking about repentance. It said nothing about repentance or turning away from it. Keep that in mind. It says nothing about turning away from it. It specifically says a man also or woman that has a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. I repeat that their blood shall be upon them because they made the choice and decision to commit spiritual adultery. And like that woman I mentioned earlier that slept with that ex-Satanist, she became one with him. And keep in mind, even though he claimed to be an ex-Satanist, he still committed adultery or fornication by laying with her. So that just goes to show how godly he is. That just goes to show that he still has that old nature, that satanic nature. His allegiance is to Satan and not God. And trust me, he will pay. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. So I'm going to cut it short right here. Maybe I'll do a part two on it, but feedback, tell me what you think. It's a shame. And he's not the only pastor that did that. C. Montel Jones is not the only pastor. You'd be surprised at the amount of witchcraft and voodoo. And all of these dark arts that's within the body of Christ, that's among the body of Christ. And you wonder why the church has no power. You wonder why the people of Yah that's in these churches, those that are gifted, are repressed. They're not able to exercise those gifts. Because the spirit of that pastor, which is the spirit of that church, is keeping them bound. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe, till next time. I'm fearless.